profile and these are my disclosures. This is a path breaking innovation. The innovation which has been introduced in India for the first time in the globe by Abed, the Freestyle Libre Pro. Dr. Asim is going to continue with the discussion after me. And this is on the 25th of March when we had the first patient on this new sensor. This is a reader, wireless reader, and you can download the data anytime, first day or second day or third day. And this is going to be continuous for 14 days. The first sensor which doesn't require a glucometer for its calibration. A fabulous innovation. And this is how it looks like. It provides a deeper insight into the clinical interventions to be carried out on the low glucose, on the mean glucose, on the possibilities on why it was, why the glucose variability was due to. And what is glucose variability? This is the conventional continuous glucose monitoring system. This is the pattern for Medtronic. We have been using this for the last more than a decade in India. These are the highs and the lows. And in simple terms, glucose or glycemic variability is described as the lows and highs in the glucose numbers. And why it is important? It's important because glycemic variability is now closely linked to have some deleterious effects on the endothelium. It can enhance apoptosis. And this is now linked to oxidative stress and the resultant vascular complications of diabetes. And hence, in day-to-day -day diabetes practice, we need to address glycemic variability. This is familiar to all of you now. And this is from none other than Dr. Siriello and his team. The works he conducted, not only in type 2 diabetes, but even in those with normal glucose tolerance. And that is with you insulinemic hyperglycemic clamp studies. Very simple. What he did was he maintained glucose values at low, 5 millimoles per liter, and values high at 15 millimoles per liter for a period of six hours alternating continuously for 24 hours and measured some of the markers, endothelial function via flow-mediated dilatation and oxidative stress via 24 hours urinary excretion of 8 isoprostaglandin F2. And they found oscillating glucose values compared to those individuals maintained on a stable high glucose value had a higher impact Oscillating glucose values resulted in oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction in human beings, both with diabetes and without diabetes. And that was an eye-opener for us. This is Indian data from our center. We did it in 63 type 2 diabetes patients. This is one of our studies. We have subsequently confirmed these findings. We calculated these three measures from the glucose variability data. SD, MAGE, and mean of daily difference, described by Dr. Manoj. And we looked into the possibility of glucose variability with various therapies. We found glucose variability, standard deviation more with increasing doses of daily insulin. Lower the total daily dose of insulin, lower the glycemic variability. Use of sulfonylurea is more linked to glycemic variability. And this is a gold standard known to you and me. Insulin pump therapies with least glycemic variability. And we have data, and this is again from our center, on how a continuous glucose monitoring can be utilized for therapeutic decision making in type 2 diabetes. Those patients on various therapies and including those on insulin. And we have also data, not only in diabetes, but also in pre-diabetes. And this is one presentation and a public, this is available in DTT, 
where we highlighted the use of continuous glucose monitoring as a routine investigation in type 2 diabetes, not in selected patients. You can use in any of your patients with type 2 diabetes so as to make modifications not only in the dosages of drugs but also in making brilliant decisions on lifestyle modifications. Why? Because we have been using the gold standard for monitoring and that is the self-monitoring of blood glucose with your glucometer. And this is only a snapshot which will tell you, yes, the glucose at that moment of time is 140 milligram percentage, whereas a continuous glucose monitoring is a similar data, it is similar to that of a video, providing you with a wealth of information on the glucose variability, on the duration spent in hyperglycemia, on the nocturnal hypoglycemic aspects. However, these are some of the complex investigations in our practice. And this is a consensus meeting which is published in Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. They all sat down and discussed on the possibilities of standardizing the glucose reporting, analyzing and optimizing the data which is obtained from continuous glucose monitoring so as to make meaningful clinical decisions. And there evolved the concept of ambulatory glucose profile, which is now readily available in India from Abbott. And this is how it looks like. You have the recordings from a continuous glucose monitoring over a period of several weeks, over a period of several days, and these readings are collapsed so as to look like a 24 hours format. So simple. It is simplifying the complex technologies so as to visualize and easily translate these glycemic patterns into your day-to-day -day clinical practice. And here you have the CGM recorded on day one. You have a pattern there. And here you have a CGM recorded for three days continuously. It looks totally different. And hence, one day cannot predict the next day. The patterns are totally different. Let me go on to third day. And these are the seven day patterns over here. Though there is an overlap between the patterns, they are still different. However, there is a huge difference over the mid-morning area, though there is an overlap in the subsequent areas. Let me move on to seven day versus a 14 day CGM. The glucose patterns obviously is gradually beginning to stabilize. You, you can visualize the glucose pattern stabilizing. It is taking a shape. And this is how an AGP is getting developed. And this is a 14-day pattern, and below you visualize the 30-day pattern. The glucose data which is measured over a period of 14 days is sufficient enough to predict the next one month with 90 to 95% certainty. This is the basis of measuring continuous glucose monitoring over a period of two weeks. And we have five curves in a standard ambulatory glucose profile. This is the 25th and the 75th percentile curve, the median, and so on. And this is the interquartile range. You, you have a blue shaded area over here. And the IQR represents 50% of the glucose values over the day, over the night, and during the postprandial period. And you have the glucose variability between the 10th and the 90th percentile curves and larger the separation between the curves, higher will be the glucose variability. Very easy to make out. Need not spend minutes or hours before your continuous glucose monitoring report. Very easy to make out. And you have one more, the median curve. The median curve here is not flat. It's moving up and down indicating glucose variability. And you have this median curve 
postprandial climbing up again denoting the postprandial excursion after intake of the breakfast and these are the interpretations very easily could be made by you and your diabetes educator in your clinic on the possibilities of a hypoglycemia the 14 day graph can predict when your patient is likely to have when are the times the patients are likely to have a hypoglycemia and these are the steps in agp interpretation three steps you assess the target you have a target which can be edited in the software and you can decide on a low target and you can decide on a high target let it be 80 and 140 is it within the target range or is it above or is it below then second step is you identify the degree of variability is it high or is it low or is it okay for you depending on multiple parameters you have the adias the position statement before you you have the seven parameters before you whether you have to be aggressive in your control or you have to be less aggressive and then the risk of hypoglycemia which is the same for everybody is it high or low or there is absolutely no risk for hypoglycemia and this is one example here you have an example of a target obviously you have a low over here this is the 80 mg at the lower limit it is well above the target and there is a low degree of variability and the risk of hypo is again low because almost all these values are above the target moving on to another example here if you look at the target it is again substantially above the target however there is a very high degree of variability you look at the mean there is a very high degree of variability and studies have shown with standard deviation and with higher variability we will have higher chances of hypoglycemia which is independent of the ambient glucose levels it has got nothing to do with the a1c levels and below a standard deviation of 1.7 millimoles there is actually no risk of hypo at all that is a magical number and here you have a risk of hypo at this area which is relatively higher <coughs> and this is example 3 this is rarely above the target with low variability and a substantial risk of hypoglycemia during the nocturnal hours and what are the inferences from agp agp will be dealt in detail by the next speaker dr asim he is sitting over here agp will give you a descriptive analysis of cgm over a period of 14 days and this is from abbot the freestyle libre pro and this will provide the healthcare professional with a wealth of information to assess your existing therapies in modifying it in adjusting it in adopting newer therapies and in making intelligent customized changes in diet and exercises and it enhances an opportunity for communication you and your patient and your caregivers partner with you and your patients and to make meaningful changes in the therapies based on your clinical judgment this is the sensor which is presently most popular in the indian market the metronic enlight sensor and they were the first to introduce cgm in india and that was approximately 10 years back and now this is the most popular one and now we were quite fortunate to have this new one a path breaking innovation from abbot which doesn't require a glucometer calibration unlike all the existing sensors because it comes factory pre calibrated we have one more sensor now in the indian market and the, and this sensor is from dexcom this is a comparison of the different sensors the enlight sensor the g4 platinum and the freestyle libre and this is the mard mean absolute rate difference lower the mard higher will be the sensitivity and the accuracy abbot makes use of a wired enzyme technology 
whereas the others will make use of a glucose oxidase technology. And this wired enzyme technology obviously will have excellent sensor stability, reduced susceptibility to variations of in vivo oxygen concentration. And it has got less response to the very common electroactive interference and supposed to be more sensitive and accurate when compared to other sensors. Despite the availability of all these modern drugs and therapies and technologies, I'm sure that all of you will agree, not even 5% of our patients with diabetes sustain the A1C blood pressure and the LDL targets of therapy. And in the majority, glycemic control remains suboptimal. So with newer, simplified innovations, let's hope for a real change in diabetes in India. And thank you so much for your patient listening.